seconds away on Studio 5. Phil Wickham talks living hope. Instead of writing for a record, I was writing for a community. And then... This ain't no ordinary world. The YouTube sensation who is now a recording artist. So we sit here as a completed album has now been released for people to hear. How are you feeling? Plus, all these wannabes out here gonna play like Jordan. Some surprising summer films you want to consider. All in Studio 5, starting now. And welcome to the show. This week's Studio 5 is the Hollywood of the South, Atlanta, Georgia. We're here to bring you the story of a young man whose childhood dreams come true, all thanks to a viral video captured in the school cafeteria. You'll want to stick around for that, but let's begin as we do every week, counting down the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news. Here are the first two. At number five. Shaquem Griffin. University of Central Florida star linebacker Shaquem Griffin joins his twin brother Shaquille with his draft to the Seattle Seahawks. And he does it with only one hand. The road here, some would say impossible. Born with a non-fully formed left hand because of amniotic band syndrome, Griffin's elected to amputate the hand at age four to ease his daily pain. The first thing I thought growing up, what people are gonna say, how he's going to be able to handle it as a little kid. Just needed somebody to give me a chance to show them that I can. Now he's getting that opportunity. Shaquem. Yes, sir. Hey, it's John Schneider calling, buddy. How you doing? Uh, I'm just, I, can't, I can't even breathe right now. Yeah, it's a dream come true for us, too, buddy. We're happy to have you, man. At number four. Everyone wants to meet you when you're a superstar, but Katy Perry wanted to meet the Pope, and she did. I'm here in Rome at the Vatican. I'm with my mama, my darling. It's a great day. I'm so excited. The singer and her actor boyfriend, Orlando Bloom, met Pope Francis in Vatican City Saturday, along with others. And the countdown continues from here in Atlanta, Georgia, in just a bit. Right now, we're about to sit down with recording artist Phil Wickham. He's probably best known for the tune, Your Amazing Grace. Well, that tune has led to him being in a new feature film. He's sitting down to talk about that as well as to share some new music. He is this week's Studio 5 interview. I never dream anything could be better till I found you, till I found you. This new song is called Till I Found You and uh, I cannot wait till people hear this song. I, I think it's a very fresh take on, for me, for what, what worship music can be and is. And, I'm so excited about it. What's the story behind this song? What happened? Um, well, I started being a regular part of a church in Southern California called Harvest Christian Fellowship. Mm -hmm. Greg Laurie is the pastor yeah, mm -hmm. and does these crusades around the I've country. I've interviewed Greg Laurie. Love yeah, him. Yeah, I love mm -hmm. him too. And, and so a lot of these new songs were born out of wanting to add some more vocabulary and songs for that church, mm -hmm. which was so life-giving to, instead of writing for a record, I was writing for a community. And the full project is due at the end of summer? Yeah, I'm I'm pushing the label for August 3rd. Okay. Um, they're saying maybe August 31st. You gave me a name and you change everything I For you, when did the when did you recognize the gift of music in you? What happened? How young were you? How old were you? Um, I was pretty young when I started uh, playing guitar. We moved from Orange County, California mm -hmm. down to San Diego. Mm -hmm. Uh, and my dad's a worship leader, and so we had music and guitar and all that stuff in the house, singing, lots of singing. Um, but I had the summer, and this during this move that I had nothing to do, and so my dad gave me an acoustic guitar and said, "Hey, Phil, I know you, you look pretty bored. We're sorry, we're away <laughs> from your friends, new school, new church, everything." Um, but he's like, "If you learn how to, if you want to learn how to play this guitar, I'll give you this guitar." And I thought, well, "That's cool." Mm -hmm. And really quickly, within that week, just learning chord after chord. Um, I, I found I absolutely loved playing guitar, I loved singing, and my dad would give me these chord charts of worship songs, that's what we had in the house. Mm -hmm. One by one, he would teach me a chord and give me a chord chart, give me a song that had that chord in it, mm -hmm. you know. As I was singing these songs, I specifically remember, remember that delirious song, I could sing of your love forever. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I remember singing it, playing it, it only has four chords the whole time, that's why uh -huh. I could do it. <laughs> and. Uh, and I just, I remember feeling the presence of God into my little bedroom. Wow. 
and I just thought, I'm singing to God, and he hears me, and I'm loving what I'm doing, but also I think I'm blessing his heart with this, and this is pretty special. And so I started um, praying to God on my own in that summer and finding Jesus in the Bible on my own. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then later that year, I was like the, I was the shy kid in the back of the room with probably like a Narnia book in my hand, you know, just like <laughs> plus the glasses and just like just the, the dork in the back of the room, you know. Um, but I had a youth pastor that, that saw something in me and pushed me on stage literally and said, hey, everybody, welcome our new worship leader. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm just like, just did so bad, you know. But I remember a few months into that, um, I, was, I was on stage leading that same song, I Can Sing Your Love Forever, mm-hmm. and just something changed in the atmosphere of our youth group, and, and people started singing with me, and we became this, then other guys started playing guitar and became this little community of young people that led. and. So back then, I remember saying, as long as you want me to do this, God, I want to do it. Now, here I am. I was 13 then. I'm 20 now. And I'm just kidding. I was 13 then, and I'm, I'm 34 now. So, uh, man, two decades of doing this. And I'll hope there's, I hope there's four more. This is such a blessing. And, um. and you are a father yourself. That's the biggest part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Penelope, uh, she's six. Mabel is four, mm-hmm. Lottie, L-O-T-T-I-E, Lottie, mm-hmm. is uh, three, and then Henry's our little one-year-old boy. How does being a dad change your relationship with your Heavenly Father? Marriage and being a father are pretty equal in the, the most powerful tools God has used me to understand my relationship with Him, you know? I think at being a father, you know, I'm obviously very flawed compared to the love of God, yeah. you know? But still, in my flawed humanity, in my moments of lying in bed, and maybe you can relate, as if I'm like, why did I lose my patience that day? You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? I shouldn't have done that. Or, uh-huh. But still, it's, there's, there's a love that runs deeper and unlike any other love for your children. And, and then you become a father and you relate that to what, to what God is saying about you. And Jesus says, like, you know, he's, when you see Jesus, like he's putting down these religious, he's, he's calling these religious leaders out. You whitewash walls, you yeah. brood of vipers, you look great on the outside, but on the inside, he's, throwing down that religion that is keeping people trapped in this like religious I've got to work Mm -hmm. and he's like and then when they ask the disciples have to ask him how to pray yeah he's like this is how you should pray Mm -hmm. he's like dear dad Mm -hmm. like give me what I need for today like help me today you know like and um and that 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 the father in heaven would look at us like that and and then being a dad and like being able to relate that like I would I would do anything for my kids and um it's it's definitely a uh, probably the biggest tool of understanding how God looks for me, that looks at me, is that we have on earth. You know? I have to ask you uh, about a song that everyone loves to hear you sing. You singing it in a new movie coming out as well. This is a messy race. Yes, it is. This is a failure. That you would take my place. That you would so I, I, I was in a room in Nashville, I was riding with a friend, and we were talking about life and what God was doing in our life and how much we need God's grace and so thankful for it. And so in about 20 minutes, we wrote the first version of this amazing grace. I honestly didn't think about it again. We had this little MP3, we sung it into our phones, <laughs> and this MP3 was recorded that I did not even think about or listen to for three years. But my friend, his name's Josh, he had given it to a pastor saying, hey, I wrote a worship song with this guy, Phil. Um, it, we, like, we started, I guess Josh maybe had started playing it at his church or something and had no idea we were ever gonna put it on radio, had no idea it was gonna connect the way it did. It just was like such a picture of God using our, it's just saying, God is for you, you know, whatever mm-hmm. you wanna do with it. And, uh, and it was just needed to happen in the right time with the right, it took four years for the right people to be involved with that song, mm-hmm. to get it to where it was, it was supposed to be heard. Um, so no other song I've ever put on a record has taken four years to write, <laughs> but that one did. And I had no idea that the next, the year, next year, for, the, for several years, it's been the most sung song in churches mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and translated into like a bunch of other languages and just feels like, whoa, Lord, you just use, we have no idea. God, you know, we see all through the Old Testament how God uses the most unlikely people mm-hmm. and things to accomplish awesome stuff for his kingdom. So it's a a cool testament of God's grace in that. And Phil Wickham's new single is available right now wherever you purchase your music and you can find that full album coming in the next few months.
Still ahead on Studio 5, meet Kalante Gavin. But I ask a question of why so much pain. And see how this tune and a cafeteria lady landed him a record deal. And welcome back to Studio 5, coming to you this week from the Hollywood of the South, Atlanta, Georgia. We are here to share the story of Kalante Gavin. We're sitting down with him in just a bit, but let's continue the countdown right now of the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news. Here's number three. At number three. Bieber on drums. The pop star continues to share his faith with his more than 99 million Instagram followers. Posting this Instagram photo of himself, standing near a wooden cross, it came during a trip to his Canadian hometown Sunday, visiting his grandparents and touring a museum about his life. Justin also posted this photo with the caption, running from the devil like... The Beeb also has a link to this Hillsong worship tune on his page. Number two. You say your name is? Actor Will Smith has attracted more than 15 million followers on Instagram in only four months. And in a recent Throwback Thursday post, he used his skydiving trip to Dubai to share a lesson about God and fear. So you fly and you go up to 14,000 feet and the guy walks you up and you're looking down to death. They say on three. One, and he pushes you on two because people grab on three. And you fall out of the airplane, and in one second, you realize that it's the most blissful experience of your life. You realize that the point of maximum danger is the point of minimum fear. And God placed the best things in life on the other side of fear. That's number three and number two, which means there is only one more headline left in this week's countdown of the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news. Studio 5 is in Atlanta, Georgia this week. This is the Hollywood of the South. It's also where young man's dreams have come true. Kalante Gavin is releasing his very first album and he owes it all to a video that went viral. It was recorded in his school cafeteria. This ain't no ordinary words. This ain't no ordinary song, yeah. The God of some is greater than the ordinary. So I'ma give them all I have. That rich, mature voice belongs to 19-year-old Kalante Gavin, whose new album, The Higher Experience, is climbing the charts. Let me tell a story about a woman with an issue Had it 12 long years, didn't know what to do Kalante's journey to the charts begins a few years ago with this viral YouTube video captured at the cafeteria counter inside his South Carolina high school. Do you remember that day? In the school cafeteria. Eyes closed, Eyes leaning closed. over. Peanut butter jelly sandwich in hand. <laughs> Book bag on, in school. Just, Is that something you did on a normal basis? No, sir. You were it? No, sir. It was just take me to the day. What happened? Man, I'm of course a normal high schooler. It, it's lunchtime, so of course I'm supposed to be going through the line to get something to eat. And here go they ask me, hey, single boy, we know you. You know, I was already known around the school to sing, but I didn't always do it. And so the opportunity presented itself. I'm like, okay. And without even hesitation, I leaned over the school cafeteria counter and I won't complain came out. 
and I mean, a week went by, and before I knew it, people were reaching out to my parents, and I, I'm noticing my, my, my <laughs> Facebook messages are going up to thousands and thousands. That's one that I never forget was thousands and thousands of messages, like me, my mom, and my dad had to share every day just going through them, and it went viral, and to this day, I'm literally here talking to you because of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. He know the best for me. So instead of complaining, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. among the calls, you get a call from Marquis Boone. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me that what that conversation was like. Marquis Boone is a pastor and record label owner who's worked with gospel artists like Tasha Cobbs, Casey J, and Brianna Babineau. Man. Uh, Marquise Boone um, actually reached out to us not too long after the video because um, I was young and fresh and not saved for real. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so at the time, you know, my parents were like, nah, you don't need it right now. And I'll never forget, you know, my dad was like, nah, we got it. It's okay. Um, a, year, a year went by and we, we met a person that was closely connected with him. And he was like, I know somebody. And Marquise Boone's name came across the desk and we we're like, uh oh, okay, what, did, what, did, what does this mean? So after my parents and me seeking God, you know, God was like, this is it. Like, now it's time for you to go. And now to go, not just to another platform, just for my music and my ministry to reach thousands and millions of people, not just from a video, but just in another, you know, another area, another field of uh, artistry. As you can imagine, the celebrations for Kalante's new project continues and it is available now wherever you purchase your music. Up next on Studio 5. Is that a Game Boy? An electronic book? Come on now, gotta get the boys. Your first look at some unexpected summer box office finds. And welcome back to Studio 5, coming to you this week from Atlanta, Georgia. The time has come for the number one headline this week in our countdown of the best headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment news. At number one. This video of a high school kid singing in his school cafeteria has pulled more than a million views on YouTube and earned the young man a record deal. Fresh out of high school, Kalante Gavin's first album, The Higher Experience, is available now. Studio 5 caught up with Kalante at the Atlanta stop on his tour. So we sit here as a completed album has now been released for people yeah, to hear. Man. How are you feeling? Man, I feel incredible, man. Um, extraordinary, <laughs> because he's extraordinary. The album, uh, it released April uh, 27, 2018. I'm just so grateful to God that I'm able to bless the world with, and literally when you hear it, you're gonna hear my heart, man. Just, I'm just blessed that the world gets to experience the ministry of Kalante Gavin. And that's a pretty good headline to wrap this week's countdown of the best in the world of uplifting entertainment news. It also brings us to our next segment. If you're like many people, you spent a few hours in the theater this past week, taking in the latest in the Avengers series. So it has really jump-started the summer blockbuster season. So let's take a look at five films you may not know are coming, but you should take the time to see. So why Tahiti? What are you here? I want to chase adventures. Hello, who's this guy? These are images from the romance drama Adrift. How would you like to sail the Hosanna to California first? What do you think? I think 4,000 miles is insane. It's based on the true story of a couple who gets stranded in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and must navigate to Hawaii with no communication or navigation tools. Hurricane Raymond has taken an unexpected turn and has been upgraded to a Category 5. Love you. Get below! Oh my God! Richard! And we're not in any flight paths. That 
It's like a 1,500 square mile search area. A needle in a blue haystack. Adrift is scheduled for June 1st release in American theaters. I can't do this. You can do anything you put your mind to. Mr. Rogers is a television icon, and his life is the focus of the film, Won't You Be My Neighbor? You take all of the elements that make good television and do the exact opposite. You have Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Low production values, simple set, unlikely star. Yet, it worked. The documentary is scheduled for release June 8th in American theaters. Hello. I've always felt that I didn't need to put on a funny hat or jump through the hoop to have a relationship with a child. Also coming June 8th. Why do you need to do this? Because it's what I'm good at. It's Danny Ocean's sister in Ocean's 8. Sandra Bullock leads the cast of eight women in a high-speed heist. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball. And we are going to rob it. Not the ball itself. Oh. On the neck of Daphne Kluger. Valued at over a hundred million dollars. The 150 million, actually. <laughs> and the long wait is over. Is this all vegetables? Who wanted all vegetables? I did. Disney's follow-up to its 2004 hit animated superhero film, The Incredibles, Incredibles 2. Help me bring supers back into the sunlight. We need Elastigirl. Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. I couldn't have done this if you hadn't taken over so well. I've got to succeed so she can succeed. <laughs> so we can succeed. I get it, Bob. What the? That is freaky. But I can't keep giving him cookies. Oh, he's freaky. Nobody in a daddy. The Pixar computer animated film is in American theaters June 15th. And finally, we all remember that one moment that made us believe. He's done it again! Unbelievable! The game is filled with stories of legends and how they were born. But this is not that story. <laughs> was you just watching me sleep again? Boy, you are better than Cable, okay? Basketball greats like Lisa Leslie, Nate Robinson, Reggie Miller, Chris Webber, and Kyrie Irving unite for the sports comedy Uncle Drew. Someone like you could combine the old school with the new school. It's gotta be my team, my roster. Yes! Is that a Game Boy? An electronic book? Come on now, gotta get the boys. Drew's putting the squad back together. Here's up, my man. Oh, yeah. Come on. Time out! Pass the ball, Kobe. Come on, Drew, you told me these dudes can play. And this dude, he's a karate man. Hey, uh, he's meditating right now. This guy right here can't even see. It's based on Irving's character in Pepsi commercials back in 2012. How's that geriatric team of yours? You get them all individual life alert bracelets? And hits American theaters June 29th. And we'll have more on those films as we get closer to their release dates. Still to come, here on Studio 5. All among good days. Ah, I'll win my bad days. Kalante returns with a lesson on the importance of you being you. Welcome back, Studio 5, coming to you this week from Atlanta, Georgia. We are just about out of time for this edition of the show. So let's look ahead right now to next week. Kathy Lee Gifford gets real with Studio 5. I don't want religion. I want relationship with the living God. And she's sharing the inspiration behind her latest project. The Rock, the Road, and the Rabbi. Yes. Beautiful book. That's just one story from next week's rundown. Certainly hope you will join us right here for that. As for the final word for this show, we thought we'd give it to the young man who invited us here to Atlanta to sample his music, Kalante Gavin. But you see, God knows what's best for me. Although my weary us, they may not see. So instead of complaining, how to say, thank you, Lord. Hey, I got a roof over my Thank you, Lord. Typical kids aren't singing like you sing, preaching like you preach, being involved in the church like that. Was that difficult? Were you ridiculed, bullied, anything like that? I never was. And it was because I was okay with being different. At an early age, my parents always instilled in this, don't be afraid to be different. 
And to this day, when somebody asks me an encouraging word to give their youth, or all I can tell them is, be different. We're living in a world now where everything around us is literally dictating and telling us who we should be. When God already called us to be who he wants us to be. Like, hey, it's okay to be in God and live for Jesus and have fun. It's okay, just be you. A young man wise beyond his years. Thank you, Kalante, for that final word. A great final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time, I hope you connect with Studio 5 on Facebook and Instagram. You can also reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then you, please be sure to come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye from Atlanta.